In today's video, I want to highlight what looks to be a brand new next generation and PlayStation 5 title coming from Pearl Abyss, and that is Plan 8. It's an open world shooter, and it looks pretty incredible based on the trailer, based on the screenshots. This might be a game that ends up really good, so we'll highlight that. Also, Rainbow Six Siege's core development team is moving on to a brand new project. Yes, they are going to begin working on something entirely new. Rainbow Six Siege has been one of the core games this generation. I don't think that's anything of a stretch to say. It has been a major part of this console generation with Rainbow Six Siege coming out back in I believe late 2015 and since then it has persisted as one of the most popular multiplayer titles. So that's a pretty big move. Also possible PlayStation VR 2 patent discussed design improvement and wireless signal. We'll go over the report from Respawn first. I do want to talk a little bit about Plan 8. And it showcases the next generation exosuit combat in brand new screenshots. One of Pearl Abyss's biggest surprise to come from G Star 2019 was the announcement of their first shooter, Plan 8. Helmed by Counter Strike co creator Min Lee, this sci fi shooter suits up players in a wide variety of exosuits that you can check out in the screenshots that they have revealed. Built on Pearl Abyss's new proprietary engine, Plan 8 is the studio's first attempt to create a next generation shooter. Joining the technical advisor Lee on the development team for Plan 8 is lead producer, the former environment art director for Black Desert Online. So they're Bringing on some star-studded developers to work on this game, and if you look at the initial screenshots for Plan 8, it is looking very, very good. This looks to be a legit next-generation experience, and they have revealed some details about the game. Pearl Abyss is striving to create a next-generation shooter that combines the best elements of the MMO genre to create an entirely new experience, unlike any other shooter game on the market. A vast open world and profound worldview will be important to Plan 8. Through Pearl Abyss describes Plan 8 as a shooter, it is difficult to combine the game to a single genre. The project aims to create a unique shooter title with MMO gameplay elements. Plan 8 is defined as an exosuit MMO shooter. The exosuit is a robotic device that the player can wear, offering amazing abilities. A key feature of Plan 8 is finding and equipping different gears to the player's exosuit, opening up gameplay experiences never before seen in any other game. Exosuits allow players to exercise superhuman power, granting wearers extraordinary strength and capabilities. Every exosuit has its own special abilities, but an exosuit meets another one on the battlefield they can counter each other depending on their compatibility. This allows for complex strategic gameplay through advantages and disadvantages among exosuits. Player can use exosuits in many different ways. For example, an exosuit with enhanced arms will help them climb up and down walls, while one with enhanced legs will help them jump over high walls and buildings. Plan 8 is shaping up quite nicely, and given it's coming from Pearl Abyss, they've delivered some high-quality products, obviously being a Korean studio. It's uncertain when we're going to get this game stateside, but given the fact we did get Black Desert online on the PlayStation 4. I think ultimately we will be getting Pearl Abyss's new shooter in Plan 8 over here in the States sometime in the future. Will it be a PlayStation 5 launch title? Will it be coming in the early life of the PlayStation 5? Probably not, but I'm very much excited to see what Plan 8 can ultimately become. While it's defined as a first-person shooter, it's also got a vast open world, and I feel like there's a lot of potential to this game, and if nothing else, it does seem to be shaping up as an absolute technical marvel, so you do have that going for it. Alright, next up, Rainbow Six Siege's core development team is moving on to a brand new project. There are a few better examples of how to do a live service game right than the ever-resilient and ever-persisting Rainbow Six Siege. Launching back in 2015, it has been one of the more popular multiplayer games on the market and people constantly go back to it. However, Ubisoft has announced via a new video that the Rainbow Six Siege's longtime creative directors Xavier Marquis and Alexander Remy are leaving to pursue new projects and taking much of the core development team with them from Rainbow Six Siege. You can check out the announcement video for yourself. However, Remy had this specifically to say, quote, we are about to change the core team of the game. A certain number of people who have been here for a long time, including Xavier and I, will leave the project and we have a new team ready at the helm. This new team has been working for several weeks and includes some Siege veterans. It is about to take a full lead of Siege within the weeks to come. The new team is great. It is composed of veterans who have worked on Siege for a long time. We are transmitting a legacy to those people. We could not have hoped for a better outcome. I am looking forward to being able to look at Rainbow with the new eyes of fans. Meanwhile, new Siege director Leroy Adensoff dropped a few hints about the direction the game may go under his leadership, and he noted, quote, we will start expanding the game universe. If you look at the player experience, we need to stop thinking about exclusive features and start implementing inclusive features instead. What I mean is that we need to deliver content that will impact every player and the whole community. It'll be interesting to 
to see how Rainbow Six Siege evolves in the coming years. I do know that if Rainbow Six Siege sees a negative turn in the next few years, it's obvious where the blame is going to lie. Let's hope that it doesn't come to that, and let's hope the game still persists as one of the most popular multiplayer games on the planet. Has the game been perfect? Has every update been absolutely swell? No, but I think there's been a lot more good than bad out of Rainbow Six Siege, and I think it's a game that a lot of other developers and publishers can look at and be like, okay, that's how you make a compelling live service game that does keep the player engaged for many, many years. Whatever the case may be, we'll see how Rainbow Six Siege turns out in the next few years, and we'll also see what their next game is going to be from the original team, because I think that could be pretty exciting. Is it going to be another multiplayer experience? Are they going to try to tackle the live service format again? I think that would be a pretty good idea, because right now, I think for Ubisoft, it's about establishing more games like that and establishing games that do have an engaged player base, and if they can create another one, much like Rainbow Six Siege... I think that's something that would be very beneficial to them. Alright, moving on from that, possible PlayStation VR 2 patent discuss design improvement and wireless signal. I want to give Respawn First the credit to this, so a link to their article will be in the description box below because they dug this up, but Respawn First is able to track down a new patent from Sony Interactive Entertainment that is safe to say for PlayStation VR 2. The patent in question was filed on December 12, 2019 at the United States Patent and Trademark Office. The patent related to an HMD device and a method for determining whether the device is being worn correctly by the user. Sony's new PlayStation VR headset is trying to solve a VR issue that relates to placing the HMD correctly on the user's head. In some known VR devices, pupil tracking is used to determine if the HMD is in the correct position. The method involves capturing images of the user's eye with a camera and using computer visions or machine learning to correctly detect the position of the pupils within the captured pictures. The new PlayStation VR headset tries to mitigate or somewhat alleviate the problems. The new invention provides a more fail-proof means to determine the position of the head-mounted display, it'll allow users to more accurately adjust the position of their headset. As a result, they'll get an optimized visual experience, at least that would be the goal with this new update. The HMD uses ultrasound to detect the position of the user's eyes. These transducers are configured to emit ultrasound signals via their respective antennas or emitters. Normally, this involves using a beam-forming oscillator to generate an electrical signal consisting of pulses of sine waves oscillating at an ultrasonic frequency. The HMD was noted to also comprise a sensor for detecting reflection of the ultrasound signals emitted by the ultrasound transducers. In some embodiments, the ultrasound transducers act as sensors. That is, the ultrasound transducers may be configured to both emit ultrasound signals and receive reflections thereof. The reflections of the ultrasound signals can be used to generate an image of the user's eye. The improvements for PlayStation VR 2, as we're so calling it now, also includes a less wanted reflection in the user's eyes. However, the most notable element of the patent is wireless connections. Part of the patent documented mentions how the HMD design is able to receive audio Video and video signals over the same wireless connection. The patent also suggests that the design might see further changes in the future. Whatever the case may be, I think if they could get PlayStation VR working in a wireless sense, that would be a massive, massive step forward for VR gaming as a whole. If PlayStation VR could be accessible, because, you know, buying a gaming PC and then getting a VR headset on top of that, that's gonna run you back a pretty penny. However, if you can get a PlayStation 5 for, say, $400, if you can get a VR headset for $2 to $250, if they could ultimately get the price that low. I mean, that's usually what the PlayStation VR base headset is going for during a Black Friday sale. I know that right away the headset wouldn't come out and it would be priced at that, but if they could work their way towards that, if they could get it wireless, if they could get it a lot easier to set up, I think VR could be really huge. I think the games are getting better and better. We've had Astrobot Rescue Mission, Resident Evil 7, Firewall Zero Hour. There have been some legitimately great games as a part of PlayStation VR. I don't think that necessarily the game offerings are the problem. I just think at this point... Yes, the price is still a little bit high for some people. However, I think it's the setup that's more annoying than anything else. I have a VR headset uh, for my PlayStation 4, and I don't go back to it much just because the setup is so annoying that unless there is a marquee game that I need to play, that's when I'll bust out PSVR. It's not in a daily or weekly gaming regimen where I'll constantly go back to PlayStation VR. I'll play PlayStation VR in cycles, and then it's time to put the damn thing away and then clean up all the wires and whatever the case may be. But if they could make it wireless, I do think that's a gigantic gigantic step forward and a gigantic step in the right direction. And that's going to conclude this video. Again, definitely give us your thoughts on Plan 8. I think that's a game that could end up surprising a lot of people. Probably won't be out for quite a while given that it's Pearl Abyss, a Korean studio, a Korean publisher. And those games do take a while to get over here stateside. I don't think it'll be a PS5 launch game, but hopefully sooner rather than later it will drop on the PS5. And a PlayStation VR 2 pan discuss design improvement and a possibility of wireless signal. I think that wireless signal could be absolutely 
absolutely incredible, so we'll keep you guys posted on that. That'll conclude this video. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.